the grace of God, so rich in mercy and boundless in compassion, be always with you. We have come together here this afternoon to know God's presence, God's peace, God's consolation in our lives. And on behalf of myself, on behalf of our St. John Bosco Parish community, I'd like to uh, welcome each of you and to offer you our deepest condolences. You know that there are a lot of people um, holding you up in prayer. A lot of people here really loved and enjoyed your dad, your, your husband, your grandfather. He was a, a wonderful man, so we keep him all in prayer. And as we do, we pause for a moment now, asking to know God's grace, God's mercy and compassion in our lives. You came to bring us abundant life, Lord, have mercy. You bring comfort to those who mourn, Christ, have mercy. You give hope to all who believe in you, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Alan, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now. And I'd ask Conrad to come forward to proclaim the first reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul's letter. We know that if the early, earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. It's the word of the Lord.
the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have born for his appearance. The word of the Lord. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve him. That evening at sunset, they brought to Jesus all who were sick, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. Well, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I think uh, we all know that. I think you all know that. It's a day that reminds us to be uh, thankful for and honor a significant person in our lives, or, or all those people in our lives that we love and we care for, but maybe don't always express in ways that let them know just how much and how deeply they are loved and cared for. The day. Valentine's Day is really all about love. And ever since we were young children, I'm sure that we've been taught that God is love. And so every time we express our, our sentiments of love, every time we share love, every time we experience love in, in any of its forms, we know God. We know God's love, we know God's presence, God's power. And so yes, God is love. Love is where we come from, and love is ultimately where we go back to when our life on this earth is over. And so today we gather here in this church at a time when we know great loss in our lives and need most to know just that, God's God's love, God's presence, God's reassurance and comfort. And so each time that we gather here, we celebrate God's love for us, for all of humanity. And especially today, we celebrate God's love for Alan. And we give thanks for the blessing that Alan was, your husband, your father, your grandfather, and the friend that that he was to, to each of you, to each of us here in this faith community. And we give thanks for the love that, that you all knew in him. We know this gospel that I just read here moments ago shows us one of the many instances of God's great love for us. It's made tangible and real in Jesus as 
as he restores Simon Peter's mother-in-law to health and wholeness. Now Jesus enters this house of Simon Peter with the rest of a few of his disciples, and he's told when he enters that Simon's mother-in-law is sick in bed with a fever. So what does Jesus do? Without any question or hesitation whatsoever, he simply goes to her, takes her by the hand, and lifts her up. And immediately she's healed. And what does she do? Well, I think that's the whole interesting part of this gospel. She begins to serve them. As though she was never sick, she begins to make sure that they have absolutely everything that they need to feel welcome and to feel comfortable. To know that they are loved and cared for. And in that moment, she knew that God had lifted her up. And so she wanted to share that joy and that blessing that she knew herself. You know, I was thinking, isn't that exactly what Al did? That's how he lived his life, filled with love and service of others. I'm sure that having an experience of that kind of love and knowing that, that in various ways throughout his life, Jesus had taken him by the hand and lifted him up, that Alan couldn't help but share this love that he knew with each of you, and perhaps to lift you up when you needed to be. And that all began on the uh, day of his baptism, it was when Alan was given that pledge of eternal life and became a, a brother, a disciple of Jesus. And with that, like each of us, Alan was called to be the face of Jesus to others. He was called to love just as Jesus loved. Called to be there for others. To serve others. Called to lift others up just as Jesus had lifted Simon Peter's mother. And how did Alan do this? How did he make Jesus' love and care real and tangible? How did he lift others up. Well, you know, over these past few days, and, and actually past weeks, I've been hearing so many great stories of Al. Some from you, of course, as I met with Alan's family just a couple of days ago, as, as well as some stories and anecdotes from people of our own parish here. And it's always beautiful, I think, when stories and, and anecdotes like these are shared and come together because they give us all a clear image of the love that he shared, often in such seemingly ordinary and simple ways that are yet profound in, in their depth and their meaning. I think many of these stories in one way or another, show us all how God, how Al lifted us up. Karen was sharing a few stories and saying how Al just couldn't sit still. If he wasn't building or fixing something out in the garage, and he was out in the yard trimming trees or making sure that the blades of grass didn't get too tall when they're gone. She laughed and she said he mowed it so often she was often worried that their neighbors thought he was just on that mower, just driving around for kicks. But Alan loved that, I'm sure. And he took joy and pride in maintaining this little part of God's green earth that, that he was placed in charge of, so that each of you could enjoy and know God's and his love in the beauty of creation. Talking with Al's sons, they recounted again many warm memories of their childhood. Many times they spoke of how their dad was not only interested in what they were doing, but fully immersed and engaged in their lives, encouraging them in their sports, their 
hockey and their ball, coaching their teams. There probably weren't very many games of yours that he missed. And that continued right up to this present, when Al expressed his love for his grandchildren, supporting them in the same way, watching your games, supporting you in whatever it is that you were interested in. You always knew he was there for you, then, and even these days, too. And there can be so many more of these stories that can be recalled, and in a short while, and I'm sure we will hear a few more as Jason comes up to share a few of his thoughts. So I'd encourage each of you to continue to share those memories. They're what helps us to keep Al's love and presence close to our hearts and in our lives. Now I know that Al genuinely cared about you. I know that he genuinely cared about this community as well. I know all miss the times when he would walk in, he and Karen would walk into church and Sunday morning. He'd walk over to me, he'd grab my hand, he'd shake it, he'd say hi, ask me how I was doing, and then he almost always had something to say about a game that was happening later that afternoon or that evening. I'll miss that. I know we'll all miss that. And I know that as a community here, we'll never have a, a roast beef as tender and flavorful as Al's was when he would cook it for us, when he would, we would have our parishioners fundraising dinners. People raved about those meals, that, that beef, for weeks afterwards. And they looked forward to it months before when they knew that day was coming. And you know, these are all just some simple and ordinary ways that Al continued to lift you up, to lift all of us. And I know you'll all, that we'll all treasure those memories, always. You know, these letters from St. Paul that uh, you chose to hear today, that uh, Conrad read so well. They're so fitting, I think, so comforting for us now, because they speak to the faith that we know Alan had throughout his life. And even in these last months as he battled his illness. And when I read them, I thought, you know, it's as though It's as though Alan could have written those words himself, those letters, speaking about, about how he poured out his life for you, about how he kept the faith, having lived in love just as Christ had called him to. And he was ready, he was ready to let Jesus lift him up one last time and bring him home to God, to the world that he came from. And that's what brings us comfort. The belief that love lasts forever. That Al's life is changed and not ended. And that it goes on to be more, more beautiful, more glorious, more grace-filled in the fullness of God's presence. Until we all have that opportunity to meet with Al once again one day, may we all do just what he did. May we lift up one another and express always the love that's in our hearts. So every day was Valentine's Day.
let us stand now. Hudson wants you to come forward. We all place our trust in God who raised his son Jesus from the dead. And we pray for the salvation of the world and for all the living in the dead. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you are the way of the truth and the life. Welcome our brother Alan to a place you prepared for him, the Father's house. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, remember, receive the, the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deceased relatives, and friends, and for all those who have fallen asleep and hope of rising again, that they may experience the gift of eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends gathered here today, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power your only Son has conquered death and has passed from this world into your kingdom. Grant that Alan may share his triumph over death and enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord. sacrificial offerings of the Lord for the salvation of your servant Alan, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt the, your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, 
Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end we acclaim. sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one Spirit of Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint John Bosco, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember especially today your servant Alan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh all those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body and blood, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Alan may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, our brother Alan has fallen asleep in Christ. Confident in our hope of eternal life, let us commend to him to the loving mercy of God the Father, and let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism and nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our brother Alan to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. In baptism, Alan shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May he be welcomed now to the glory of eternal life. Sense rise to God who has called him to himself. <coughs> Around the home, 
our cars, a lawnmower, a broken underground sprinkler, you name it, Dad can fix it. Dad always had time to help family and friends with different things that needed to be fixed. Dad also fixed his own life by overcoming a couple vices. He got the help, put in the time and commitment, and changed his life. The change was transformational. A part of this change was his ability to empathize with others. He once told me that a lot of people are driven by the pain that they had experienced in their lives, and I should consider this in my dealings with people. This profound sense of empathy allowed Dad to have great compassion for those that required it, and also made him an incredibly understanding father that gave good, sage advice for the ability to provide soothing comfort when life wasn't going the way he thought it should. Dad, Dad could also be the fixer of a broken heart. I remember one time in my life when Dad counseled me in matters of the heart. At the time, I was living in Calgary. I had three jobs and going through a tough time. He told me, quit your jobs, go to the West End counter, pick up the ticket, and come home. Once home, Dad told me to come up to the meat shop with him. He asked me, what was so special about this particular person? I ran through a laundry list of qualities. Dad responded, well, I think there are a lot of people out there with those qualities. There's definitely someone out there for you. My dad was right. In the moment, my dad made me realize my flawed thinking. He essentially took away my sorrow, propped me back up, and sent me back into the world to move forward. Dad could also fix my little dog Stella's back. She's a miniature brown-haired Dalshund who he lovingly referred to as his little brown dog. When Dad was coming over, I would tell her that Grandpa was coming. She definitely knew who Grandpa was and what it meant, and would immediately go crazy with happiness. Stella suffered a slip disc which left her hind legs paralyzed. This happened in August 2020. She had various physiotherapy exercises that Dad would help with daily. Every morning at 8 a.m., he would swing, swing by to help me. He did this till he was no longer able to come over and help. With Dad's help, we got her walking on three legs. Dad was also the fixer of good food. Most people know about his meat shop, where he would make sausage, cure ham, and bacon. I believe that everyone in the room has eaten the food that Dad made in the meat shop and or cook. Dad was also an awesome cook. I remember when I was very young, Dad took a Chinese cooking class, and I thought this was the best thing ever. Dad would also do the cooking for the church fundraisers cooking the beef roasts. Dad definitely showed his love through food. He always told, he always told me that you may not have a lot of money, but you always have money. I definitely subscribe to this notion. Dad is still the fixer even in death as he donated his organs. The only thing that could be given after the ravages of cancer were his corneas. Because of Dad's eyes, someone's sight will be restored so that they can live a life more fully. As you can see, Dad showed his love not only in words, but more so in action. Dad would always help those he loved and cared about in any way he could. He was a lot more than the man that loved to watch sports, even though that was very important, a very important part of his life. Even after chasing us boys around the hockey rink and ball diamonds, Dad continued chasing, but now with his grandkids. Sometimes it was 4 o'clock practice with Hudson, then off to Blake's swimming, then to Cash's hockey game. And then he would say, Karen, we can still catch the third period of the Blake game. That was our dad. He loved life, and he lived it to the fullest. And I'm just going to share a couple memories of the grandkids. So Hudson, I love that my grandpa never missed a golf tournament, or baseball, or hockey game. 
and he even came to a lot of the practices too. I'll miss him coming over every morning to watch me before school and giving me my spelling test. Memories I have are how much he loved his seeds, his coffee, and my dog. He always snuck him food of scraps that he wasn't allowed to have. Conrad, there are a million memories I could share, but the main thing that comes to mind is the word patriarch. I was lucky enough to be the oldest grandchild, and with that came plenty of undivided love and attention that I could not be more thankful. From a young age, I always remember him having a silly demeanor, a goofy personality around me to make me laugh, which as I grew into adult, adult, adulthood, it became apparent that was just his love for life. He took pride in helping others in any way he could, shelling peas so I could eat straight out of the bucket on the acreage, driving me to and from school, sports, and friends' houses when Dad and Jenny had work, giving me my first job at my team helping doing maintenance at OMAC, all the blade games we went to growing up, showing me how to fix my car when there's clicks that shouldn't be there. I could not have been too entertaining to watch in my hockey years, with only eight career goals, but I always knew I had my number one fan in the stands. I don't think he missed a game across seven years. As a man who had a passion for sports his whole life, that meant a lot to me. My grandpa had a heart of gold and hands that would work harder than you could imagine when a time of need came up. And I could not be prouder of the life of the Cash. Cash's favorite memory of grandpa was grandpa and him going to the Blades games together. Blake said when grandpa took them to play mini golf and his young, yummy meat platters when we would have suppers together. So, it's a little bit about Dad. I'm sure you all got your own memories. Keep them close to you and remember them. Thanks. Let us go in and know God's peace.